Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Ryan Fenners. Welcome back to the Fentertainment channel. On today's video, we're going to be building a coffee table that we found on Pinterest. However, the pen that we found was not for a DIY. It was actually for a company who builds and sells these tables. So on today's video, it's going to be a Pinterest versus reality video. Let's get started. Now what really stuck out about this coffee table for us was the legs on the sides were not at a 90 degree angle from the ground. They were actually uh, moved in a little bit at the top so it's cut at an angle. So I don't know what angle they use. It looks a little bit uh, greater than the angle that I use myself but I use a 10 degree angle for the coffee table legs so I went ahead and cut out the left and right legs. I, I want to say I did mine around 20 inches. Once I did that, I wanted to make sure my width was what I wanted. So I put the legs on the ground. I measured out the top uh, piece. I went ahead and cut that to length. I measured out the bottom piece and I cut that to length as well. And then I used pocket holes to screw everything together. Now, once I had the pocket hole assembly clamped to the top of my table saw, I find this right here is the most level surface in my garage. I don't have a workbench yet, so uh, I just keep using the table saw as a workbench. But anyways, when you're using the 2x4s, make sure you set the depth of the collar here that is on the drill bit for the wood that you're using. Also, remember to set which side of the wood you're going to against the Craig jig itself before you clamp it down and screw it. This is because on this right here coffee table, I wanted all of my pocket holes on the bottom portions of the wood. Now with that being said, I was able to accomplish it, but sometimes when you place the wood against the Craig jig, it had an angle on it. So you'd want to definitely make sure you have that set in the right way. Now, once I had both of my side pieces cut, I went ahead and drilled them together. And as you can see here, they look great. They match up perfectly. I couldn't ask for any better results at that time. Now, in order to get this exact angle here of the first cross brace, the only thing that I did is I put the uh, board underneath where I wanted to cut. And I put an extra board there on the corner to give the whole thing support. And then I just took a pencil and I... I marked that line right there and I marked the line at the other side. I wanted to get those angles exactly the way, you know, the, the best way that I could get them without doing any kind of calculation. So, like I said, I just drew a couple of lines, took that to the uh, miter saw and cut them off. Once I had that cut, I want to say these were like at a 58 degree angle and it fit great. However, what I did to attach these is I took a pocket hole and I went from the top into the top left and from the bottom into the bottom right where those two lines are right there. And that's how I attached that one main piece to the sides. Now, in order to get the X brace piece, what I did is I did the same exact thing. I put it underneath the side panel here. I supported it with an extra piece of wood I got the angle that I wanted and I cut it. Once I had this right here angle set and properly into place, I had to cut it again in order to make the pieces meet up and form an X in the side of the uh, legs themselves. With that being said, I had to sneak up on the cut and make a couple of shortcuts because I didn't want to have a, a wonky looking piece. So with that being said, uh, I just, I just, like I said, I just made a couple uh, soft cuts and uh, got it to where I wanted it so I could attach those as well. Now on the X brace, I did also use some pocket holes to attach to the center brace. And I did the same things as I did on the first piece with the top and the bottom to attach those. Once I had those pieces in and the way I wanted them, I left them alone and I was so happy with the way these turned out. Next up, I took a two by four and I cut it in half. It was a 10 foot long strip. I cut it in half and then I recut it to the uh, length that I wanted this table to, to sit at underneath the top portion, if that makes sense. 
However, after I cut it with the miter saw, I took it over to the table saw and I cut the two two by fours lengths in half. Now the top portions, uh, I just left those square, but the bottom portions, they look sort of like an L. If you look at the L from the side, uh, I put a rabbit in there from the table saw. So later on in the video, I'll show you, I'm, I'm making some slats that the slats can fall into place. However, once I had those configured out the way I wanted them, I went ahead and used the Craig jig as well, screwed pocket holes into them. Now in order to attach the sides to the rails, what I did is I ended up putting one side of the end table onto the table saw and be sure to put the best side towards the bottom of the saw because that's the side everyone will see. So I did just that and then I took each rail and I put it into place and used the pocket holes to screw them down. Once I had all four of those the way I wanted them, I took it and put it on the ground and matched it up to the other side of the coffee table. Be sure to put the best side out and use the inside for the rails to where you want to do all the attaching to. Once I had that done, the coffee table skeleton was then complete. Now for the top of the coffee table, we use two by six pine boards. I used five boards wide to give us the desired width that we wanted. For each side of the coffee table, we added three inches of overhang to give us the length that we desired. Once we had that together, we used the Craig pocket hole system and screwed all five boards together. Now for the bottom section of the coffee table, I wanted to go with the slat look. So what I did is I took the measurements off the rebates of the lower portion of the coffee table that we cut out earlier so the slats would fit down nice and flush. So once I had that measurement, I took a piece of two by six and cut it to length. And once I had that cut to length, I actually had to take a couple of those. I took them to the table saw and I ripped them long ways to get my slats out. And I think they were about three eighths of an inch thick. Now once everything is pretty much pre-built and assembled other than the tabletop and the slats itself, next I got on to painting the skeleton. I used a Wagner sprayer and I used some Sheridan Williams emerald polyurethane paint that we paint all of our trim inside of our house with. Now I sprayed it and then make sure if you spray anything like this in a garage like I do to be sure and wear a respiratory type mask so you don't breathe in any type of those fumes. Once this paint laid down, I went ahead and shot another coat on it. The next day, I flipped the table upside down and shot another coat on it underneath it. And I also sanded before I painted, which I didn't mention. And I really didn't want to show just because sanding is kind of boring. The following day, we went ahead and started the staining process. Now, I sanded down the top of the tabletop itself. I sanded down each table slat itself. And I put pre-stain on everything so... Once we do our full stain, we won't get any kind of blotchiness look going on. Once I had everything stained, went ahead and wiped it down. Now for the bottom of the slats on installing them, what we did is I took one slat and nailed it with my brad nailer to the left hand side of the bottom of the table. Once we did that, I had an extra slat that we did not stain. We used that as a spacer to, to lay the next one and the next one and the next one in, in order. Once we got down to the very end, we just measured it. We took an extra slat that we had for the end of it. We ripped it on the table saw, I spaced it, and I nailed it down there as well. Now in order to mount the tabletop itself to the skeleton of the coffee table, I went ahead and took the tabletop and flipped it upside down back on the sawhorse stands. Once I did that, I grabbed the skeleton and put it on top of the tabletop upside down as well. Now I took my measurements from earlier when I was building it and went around and leveled this thing and measured as much as I could to get it centered as perfectly as I could. Now I did have some help with my wife, not shown in the clips, but I needed the help to get it perfectly. Now once I got everything the way we wanted it, we used pocket hole screws to attach the skeleton of the coffee table directly to the top of the coffee table while it's mounted upside down. I put three screws in both sides and one screw in the center of the front and the back. All right, once the coffee table was assembled, I went ahead and carried it inside. Since I was by myself at that one point, I used a hand truck. Now that was 
a good idea to get it indoors because of how bulky and heavy this thing is but at the same time I marred some of the paint so at the very end of this project I had to go back and do some touch-up painting here and there with that being said I also went ahead and added some feet to the bottom of the coffee table now it slides a lot easier on this laminated hardwood floor so it looks good it slides good and it feels good well this is it guys i appreciate you watching my build of this coffee table we have not built the end tables yet for the the ends of the couch to holds the lamp we plan on doing that next but um if you would please subscribe to the channel if you would please like this video it helps the video be seen in other places share it with a friend and also do you think this went well for a pinterest versus reality leave your comments below again i'm ryan finners and you've been watching the finnertainment channel we'll see y'all later